Today I'm in Oklahoma, and behind me is Atomic Annie. For anyone who's got a small nuclear arsenal, you may not have the means to deliver it. You might not have a bomber aircraft or a missile, but you might be able to afford one of these. Atomic Annie was developed in the 1950s and was used between April of 1955 and December of 1962. Robert Schwartz, an engineer at the Picatinny Arsenal in 1949, upscaled a 240 millimeter howitzer shell, which was the maximum used by the U.S. at the time, and matched it to a 280 millimeter shell that was similar to the German K-5 railroad gun shell used in World War II. In fact, the name Atomic Annie is most likely derived from Anzio Annie, which was a German K-5 gun used against the American landings in Italy. The project was developed quickly and was ready by Dwight Eisenhower's inaugural parade in January of 1953. The cannon itself was transported by two specially designed tractors, similar to how the German K-5 gun was transported on railroad schnabel cars. These tractors had independent steering, similar to how fire department ladder trucks are capable of being steered from both the front and the back. This allowed it to travel at speeds of 35 miles an hour and still be able to negotiate a right-hand turn on a road 28 feet wide. Setup was quick as well. Less than 12 minutes it could be ready to fire, and in 15 minutes could be back and ready to move again. The series of nuclear tests known as Upshot Knot Hole in the Nevada test site hosted the first and only firing of a nuclear warhead from the atomic cannon. This was done on May 25, 1953 at 8.30 in the morning. On that morning, a soldier crouched in a trench and used a 60-foot long lanyard to pull the trigger on the gun. After flying over seven miles, the warhead detonated 524 feet in the air, and the 15 kiloton atomic explosion, which was the same size of the blast used to destroy Hiroshima, went off. 3,200 soldiers and civilians were present to watch the four and a half foot long shell, which weighed 805 pounds, go off in the Nevada desert. Below the explosion were mock bridges and buildings, as well as a handful of very unlucky sheep. It would be the only nuclear shell to be fired from the cannon. With the successful test, 20 cannons were manufactured, as well as 80 W9 warheads to be used in them. Each cannon cost $800,000 to build. Atomic Annie was obsolete soon after it was deployed. This was due to the development of nuclear shells that were capable with existing artillery pieces in the U.S. arsenal, the 155mm in particular. The W-9 warhead itself was a gun-type nuclear warhead, similar to the Little Boy atomic bomb used over Hiroshima. It was one-tenth of the weight of Little Boy, but still had the same 15 kiloton explosive power. It used 110 pounds of highly enriched uranium in large rings assembled with one smaller bullet which was fired down the tube by conventional explosives into the ring assembly. This achieved critical mass and detonated the weapon. They used this style of explosive because gun-type nuclear warheads were able to withstand rapid acceleration and g-forces which would have been imparted when fired from the artillery piece. And also the smaller diameter of the gun-type design can be easily fitted into projectiles that can be fired from existing artillery. During the Cold War, the nuclear was fast becoming the answer to all of the questions as to how to fight the Soviets, and these nuclear artilleries were to be used tactically against enemy armies as opposed to strategically against cities and military bases and heavy industry. The Soviets weren't going to allow America to have the monopoly on nuclear artillery though, and they developed a 406 mm self-propelled howitzer known as the 2A3 condensator or condenser. Atomic Annie wasn't the only small nuclear weapon developed by the Americans at the time. In fact, an even smaller one, able to be set up by two to three men out of the back of a jeep, was built, known as the Davy Crockett. And these were meant to support battalions in their defensive deployment plans in the Fulda Gap along the inner German border, as well as on the Korean Peninsula. These would be set up over canyons and, and areas that could funnel armor into a killing ground, essentially using the armor and vehicles as roadblocks in a temporary deadly radioactive zone. The Davy Crockett had a 100% instant casualty radius of 520 feet, 
with troops further away dying within hours or days, and at most, surviving for two weeks. Several men could set up the Davy Crockett and have a nuclear warhead delivered as far as 1.7 miles away in minutes. Widespread proliferation of the Davy Crockett didn't follow on, though, due to the fact that it was shockingly inaccurate and was considered too inaccurate to deliver even low-grade nuclear fires. Thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, get lost.